was explaining generator to a kid the other day, generator wiring, and this actually works for both generators and motors. Um, and it, what it is is the layout of your windings. If you know these, each of these is for a coil, and they have a standard numbering. If you don't happen to have a chart, you can take and you just draw them out the way that they would lay out in series. And this would be, if this was 480 volt, these would connect together. We're figuring that these are standard. Each of these coils are 120. Because of the angle is why you get 480 between here. And that also depends on what your regulator is set to. But the big thing I wanted to draw out with this drawing here is the numbering system. And, well, you'll find lots of books and charts and things that give you which number is which. They don't tell you how you can do it without having a book. And here's how you can do it. Start out with a center point. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that center point for a little bit here. This drawing's left over. I was actually showing this to a young man that was doing some generator work. Um, so once you draw all of your little coils here, then you can number them. You can number one, two, three, drop down, four, five, six, drop down to the next layer, seven, eight, nine. Then you drop down, and this would be 10, this would be 11, and this one here would be 12. And the reason that I had that earlier when I had first drawn this for the young man, the reason I had them together was I was showing him the connections for a nine wire. And nine wire is really common on motors. Generators are real common on 12 wires. Now, I won't get into the Z winding right now because we have another thing we were going to erase the board and get on with here. Um, Z connection, not winding. But, and the reason why the regulator is coming off of one coil is normally most of your regulators are picking off of a 120 volt sensing circuit. And it doesn't really matter where you get the 120, a lot of your generators will permanently connect in to one of your windings so that however you hook it up. There's also generators that will have a secondary winding that's just in here to take up the general magnetic flux and doesn't even hook into the windings you're directly getting power out of. There's a few different ways they hook them up. Um, anyway, that's a common way that they hook up. Sometimes you'll also have to tie in. Not necessarily 3-6, that was just the easiest on the drawing, could be any one of the coils. If you found one that was a 240 volt input for your regulator, of course, you'd have to have a set that was coming off of 240, however you wired it. Now, if we're running a, either a, a generator or a uh, motor, let's, let's say we're running a generator and it's 480 volt. So we tie all of these together. You traditionally put your lines on one, two, and three. These are T numbers, which would be terminal number, and then you go L for your lines, but you just normally go one, two, and three, so that you keep the numbers the same going into your line. If we were doing a 240 volt, what we would do is we would connect 10, 11, 12, 4, 5, and 6, so that we would essentially have the same thing as if we had um four six and five four i make some pretty ugly numbers here four five six and then again one two and three so by connecting those together it's the same as if you had made a duplicate of these three here and then you connect seven and one together <clears throat> so you'd, you'd have those two that you would connect together you would connect eight and two, you would connect nine and three. And then again, these would be your line connections, one, two, and three. And that would be for your 240 volt or for your 208. Um, you normally, there's, there's other ways you can connect this. You can also connect 240 volt by doing a delta. We're not gonna explain that right now. Um, but the big difference on most generators you're working with, most of them today are wired in a Y, which is this is the y, y configuration. And your difference between putting out 208 and 240 is usually where you set the regulator. Same as for the 480, you could have your 480 would do 480 
it'll do 460, it'll do 416 as long as your regulator allows you to drop down that far and you'll have different outputs from all of those. What you will see many times in an electric motor is a nine wire and that's where we just erase these numbers here but and then this one here is not numbered or connected at all and you'll do that for a motor and the reason why you wouldn't do that for a generator normally is a couple reasons your generator with 12 wires allows you more interconnections you can do a z winding with these which I'd have to think about it for a while that's why I'm not going to do it today and that's where you can do a high amperage single phase uh, 110 or 240 that you hook up to all of these uh, it's a little inefficient it loads part of the windings unevenly it's not suggested if you're doing uh, extreme use but at a lower rating it works and it's better for uh, hooking up than just hooking to some of the windings where you only hook into part of them for getting your 110 because normal a real common one is you hook your 110 just off of here well you're leaving the other two-thirds of the generator unused where with a Z winding you make some use of these essentially counteracting the, the current from one direction to the other and then you hook up to that in a parallel different thing we'll maybe cover that another day but electronics electrical is something we do but not our main focus in the channel um, what was I getting back to the voltage regulation Oh yes, the motors. In the motor, you're not worried about having this as a ground point, where if we're doing this as a, gen as a generator, you want these ones here, which are numbered, to connect with these ones, and you normally make that your neutral, which you then ground for safety. Having that ungrounded set of windings there, since they're effectively grounded through the other windings to a point, doesn't really matter on a motor, and you're grounding the housing anyway. Uh, on the generator, it adds a little bit more safety of having actually your low voltage point uh, connected to your neutral on all of them. I like 12 wires. Myself, if I was coming up with the standards, I'd have put 12 wires on motors too. I mean, it would have just been me. I'd like, yeah, let's give us more options. There's cool things we're not supposed to be able to do that we could do if we had 12 wires. And you can actually take a wire. Uh, when you understand this, it makes it easier if you're really into stuff. Say you have a motor that's 480 volt only, you come in, start clipping the windings, interconnections, and you can rewire them, which don't just rewire them to be a 208, but come in and rewire them so that you have the correct numbers on the terminals. So somebody later on can change them both ways. I've done that a few th times on some very special motors that are not normally available. A one horse is about the bottom size I like to do, I did a half horse one time, but the wires get so fine to deal with. Uh, and the interconnection wires are coming off the coils are already short. It's very easy to break them. I prefer to do it. A five horse doesn't worry me at all. Um, bigger motors, piece of cake, easy to add extra connections, change them one, one to another. The, the, like I say, the half horse was a little iffy, but it was such a unique motor and it was a $10,000 special motor for this machine. And I was like, you know, what, what do you do? You either make it work or if all else fails, we'll make an adapter for the motor. Yeah. We weren't going to spend, they weren't going to spend, they, it wasn't me, it was another customer. They weren't going to spend 10 grand buying another motor no matter what. So yeah. it was, try it, John. And it worked. And in fact, it's still in operation today. That's down in Washington. It's part of a shear. Oh, okay. And it had to do with the back gauge. I think it was a back gauge motor, if I remember correctly. I think it was a cal calibrated system with a back gauge uh, that had an encoder on it. But it's been a long time ago. Don't remember for sure. Okay, that was that. Now we get back to what we're dealing with today. That is not.